Good day to you ladies and gentlemen. In this video I want to give you somewhat of a guideline on how to choose parts for great looking as well as performing computer. This guide is aimed at first time builders and people coming back to the PC building game who want to refresh their knowledge. For starters, I'm not gonna make a secret out of it, the aesthetics of the builds I do are important to me. In my opinion, when you do care at least a bit uh, for how your build looks, a slightly better looking build might bring you more joy than a performance advantage you might not even notice. Therefore, I wouldn't jeopardize the overall aesthetic of a build for a 5 MHz high clock speed on your TPU, for instance. You don't have to adapt this philosophy, but that's probably one of the best ways to go for your first build, at least if you're choosing the parts yourself. Going into every single performance detail might simply burn you out and take the fun out of the whole process because so many brands are on similar levels in performance and quality nowadays. This doesn't mean you shouldn't look up parts for your build, especially the expensive ones. For instance, are the bad fans on the GPU going to tear my ears off or will the atrocious software support spoil the whole build? I would simply go through the parts you have to and can choose in the order I'd recommend you. I'm also going to tell you what you should look out for so you end up with a properly working and looking machine. Okay, let's get into it. I usually choose somewhat of a theme first. What color should the parts be? What kind of lighting would you like? Or do you want any at all? I want to note here that building a good looking computer is not really any more expensive than going only for performance. Manufacturers know that their buyers care for aesthetics and so most parts are stylized right out of the box without any notably higher pricing. For assembling your build online and before you put it all in your shopping cart, you want to use a website like PC Part Picker. The link is in the description. Okay, let's get into the parts then. The case. First of all, the form factor. This has to match your motherboard. They come in ATX, MATX and ITX. For your first build, you might want to choose an ATX case. They are the biggest and the most common. You have plenty of space to build and won't run into any clearance issues. Probably. Second point. Which CPU cooler height and which GPU length does the case allow so you won't run into any clearance issues when you're choosing a big cooler or a big graphics card. Third point. Does it have USB 3.0 ports at the front I.O. panel or any other considerable I.O. features. Fourth, how many fans does it come with and how much space is there to expand? And last but not least, how does it look? What do people say about the manufacturing quality? What do people say about how to build in it? Is it good? Is it bad? How's cable management and all that stuff? If you want to know something specific about a case, Hardware Canucks have probably a review on it on their channel. Link is in the description. Some notable brands to choose from are listed here. For my current build, I've chosen the Corsair Crystal 570X, which will look fantastic, I'm sure of it. Next up would be choosing a CPU that fits your purposes. There are always videos on the current processors and which is best for what by Linus Tech Tips and Gamers Nexus. I'll link the most recent one in the description. At the moment you choose an Intel i5 or i7 CPU for pure gaming or a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 CPU for gaming alongside any kind of content creation. Next to CPUs there are also so-called APUs which are CPUs with integrated graphics so you won't have to get a dedicated graphics card but they obviously are inferior in performance. Current Intel CPUs use the 1151 socket and AMD CPU is the AM4 socket. This has to match your motherboard as well as your CPU cooler. I'm gonna go for the Ryzen 7 2700 for my current build, which is the non-OC version of the top of the line AMD Ryzen CPU at the moment. Because it's going to be used mostly for gaming, but some uh, video editing and audio editing as well. Motherboards. There are many things to consider about motherboards and there are very detailed reviews and videos on that but the most important points for you are first of all does it have the same or a smaller form factor than your case and does it have the same socket as your cpu second does its chipset fit my cpu generation 
So for this Ryzen 2700, you choose something like this B450 motherboard or X470 motherboard, whatever. Third, does it allow overclocking if you have an overclockable CPU? So for instance, if you don't have an Intel k CPU, you won't need an overclocking motherboard. If you want to overclock your CPU, check that the motherboard you choose has some proper heatsinks on its VRMs. Those are delivering the power to your CPU. Point number four. Which RAM speed does the motherboard allow? You can check this on the manufacturer's website or on the website you want to buy it at. Point number five. Is there a slot for M.2 SSD? Point number six. How many fan headers are there? Are there enough for the number of fans you want to install? If you want to know, simply google it or have a proper look at the picture of the motherboard. If there are not enough headers, you might need something like this uh, fan header splitter. For the current build, I've chosen the ASUS Strix B450F, which offers a great amount of features and styling to rival the X470 boards at a very reasonable price. Also, I've kind of fallen in love with this included back I.O. that they have. Okay, CPU coolers. If you're building a Ryzen system and you're not planning to overclock, you can keep the box cooler that comes with it. They perform well and, well, look the part. For Intel CPUs, you're going to have to get a cooler. I'll break it down like this. You're not going to need water cooling if you're not going to overclock to the max. So it mostly comes down to an aesthetic decision. If you get a normal air cooler, you want to check that its height fits your case. For water cooling, you have to consider that the block might uh, get in the way of one of your RAM slots and that the radiator has to fit your case as well. Technically, the cooler needs to fit your CPU socket and have a higher TDP than your CPU. You also want to have a margin for overclocking there. Some notable coolers are over here. I've chosen the Corsair H60 liquid cooler with a 120mm radiator. It's not available in RGB, but I figured that the white Corsair logo will give some nice visual reference points with the Corsair logo at the front and the Corsair name at the side of the case. Okay, RAM. For RAM there are two main factors, frequency and latency. For frequency you usually don't really need more than 3000 MHz, so don't fret if you can afford it. Even 2666 is enough for a quick system. But keep in mind that Ryzen CPUs are more dependent on faster RAM. Check that your motherboard supports the frequency you choose or it will simply slow down your RAM. If you buy any RAM above 2133 MHz, you have to overclock it in your BIOS. The options to do so can be called DOCP, EOCP or XMP. The next factor, latency, is marked by the CL at the end of the name of the product. You want this to be as low as possible. If you want your RAM to be RGB, go for it. It illuminates the right side of your case, which usually stays quite dark. For understated budget builds, I also like to use the G-Skill Value RAM, which is black without a heatsink and looks also great in my opinion. In overall capacity, you should have about 16GB of RAM. You will always want to split this up into two modules to take advantage of dual channel. This is faster than using a single bigger module. It also looks better. <laughs> For this build, I've gone with the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM, which looks amazing. Next up is your GPU. Your GPU together with your CPU will be pretty much the defining factor of your build. Range-wise, you can either choose to go for an expensive upper tier card and keep it for a long time, or a mid-range card for a lower price and get a new one earlier. Usually you can get one new graphics card once to spice up your build again instead of getting a completely new one. Please keep in mind that even though they are called mid-range, mid-range cards can easily run the latest AAA titles without any problems. At the moment AMD Radeon cards can only compete in mid-range up to 250 euros, at least until Nvidia drops the RTX 2060. For anything above mid-range, you'll have to look at NVIDIA cards, which are sadly terribly overpriced due to a lack of competition, except you want to get a AMD Vega card, which are power-hungry and hot. When choosing your GPU, just have a look which ones might fit your build the best and Google any reviews on this. You will want to avoid noisy coolers. 
If you look at a card that's much cheaper than the others, keep in mind that you might be sacrificing quality or that you might be looking at a blower style card, which you usually want to avoid. There are factory overclock cards, marked by a simple OC in their name, and non overclock cards. You don't want to spend 50 bucks extra on this. It's the same hardware anyway and you can overclock any card to the same degree by hand. For some cards there are different amounts of VRAM, like a 4 and an 8 GB version. If you can afford it in any way, you will always want to go with the higher memory version of this one. It might be tempting to go for the cheaper version, but there is a serious performance difference there. In this build I am going to use the Zotac RTX 2070 AMP version, which will be my first Zotac build and I am very pumped. Ok, let's talk storage. In most cases you want a SSD to install your system and your most important programs on, as well as a hard drive for a bunch of your data, be it videos, other programs. You can of course choose to use SSDs only, which will be very expensive, or choose hard drives only, which will be very slow. The fastest kind of memory you can easily get are NVMe M.2 SSDs, which you slot simply into your motherboard. 2.5 inch SATA SSDs are a bit less expensive and slower, but I wouldn't judge you if you choose one for aesthetic reasons and they are still plenty fast enough to run your system. For hard drives I usually go with something reliable with a low power consumption like a Western Digital Blue or a Seagate Barracuda, but you can of course get something more expensive uh, that's a little bit faster. Simply keep in mind to not cheap out on your storage. You will be the one who's crying if all your data is gone one day. For this build I've got a Samsung 970 EVO M.2 SSD and a 2TB Seagate Barracuda. Ok, power supplies. Power supplies do have to fit the form factor of your case as well. They come in modular and non-modular. With modular PSUs you only have to use the cables you really need and don't have to bother with the rest. For me personally this is quite important because it's way easier to get a clean build with this. If you want your build to look proper, check that your cables are completely black if you don't want to get sleeved cable extensions. If you want to check what wattage you need, you can either go to the website of a PSU manufacturer and enter your hardware there, or you simply check the overall wattage of your system on the PC Part Picker assembly page and add about 200 watt. PSUs usually come with a rating. 80 plus, bronze, silver, gold, etc. You don't really have to bother with this as long as your PSU has a rating at all. Check that you have the according PCIe power connectors for your GPU. If you are reusing uh, an old PSU, it might be that they don't have them. For this build, I've got the Be Quiet Pure Power 10CM because Be Quiet simply has amazing quality. Never ever cheap out on your PSU, you do not want to fry your whole system. Ok, some additional stuff. Fans. You should have at least uh, one or two fans at the front of your case to get air in and get it relatively unobstructed out of the back on top. So get at least one additional fan for the back as well if the case doesn't have one. Beware of bad and noisy fans, there are also reviews on those. RGB or LED fans can really improve the look and lighting of the build immensely. Again, check if there are enough fan headers on the motherboard and keep in mind that some fans, like the NZXT AER, might need a central lighting hub. If you want your build to look clean and want to spice it up a bit, you can give it the last kick with sleeved cables like those. Ok, some budget tips. If you are on a tight budget, keep in mind that you can always add any kind of memory later. So don't downgrade your GPU or CPU if you are 50 bucks down or so. When you know you will have the money later, you can survive on 8GB of RAM for some time, even though your experience is going to suffer for that time. It's the same for hard drives, you can easily live on a 250GB SSD and upgrade later. If you're building a Ryzen system, you can also use the boxed cooler until you can afford a proper one. Overall, for the aesthetic key points of my current build, I've gone for a grey-black Corsair RGB build. I've looked up which RGB fans are pre-installed in the 570X, which are, I think, SP120 RGB fans. I hope this video helped you out and if you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. If you have any further questions, check out the PC Master Race Discord or subreddit or the Build a PC subreddit. I'm gonna link some builds in the description and some channels to help you out further. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. 
I'll see to getting this built done as soon as possible.